Oh, good evening, gentlemen. This is an ICO 460 oscilloscope. It's it's probably from the late 50s or early 60s. I'm not sure exactly when the ICO was a kit company, kind of like Heath Kit, except they didn't last as long. So somebody probably built this thing from a kit, would be my guess. It works, works, um, but the uh, the horizontal amplifier doesn't work in X Y mode and everything's out of calibration and I suspect it just needs, you know, the regular going over the same as we've been doing with the S40. Um, I'm not going to plug it in and show you the function and lack of function because I don't want the capacitors to be charged or what's left of them, so um, we'll try it out after it's done. Alright, let's tear this bastard apart and see what's going on in there. Oh. Okay, the cover has been removed. You see an assortment of vacuum tubes, uh, a big multi-part capacitor in a can, which will surely be bad by this time. We see some, some large carbon composition resistors. We see some pots that will need cleaned out. Of course, we see a lovely cathode ray tube um, mounted very securely uh, in the chassis. That's good. Uh, some of them just kind of hang out. Um, back here, a bunch more resistors, the backs of the tube sockets. Uh, and I assume there's a bunch of point-to-point -point wiring underneath. Let's turn it over and look. The uh, tubes have been removed and their positions labeled on the chassis. And this is the bottom. Um, it would appear to me that someone has been in here recapping this thing sometime in the past. Probably the only reason it works at all. These electrolytic capacitors look much newer than one would expect to see in an instrument of this age. These these are more like what you'd expect to see and I I suspect that those are probably probably bad. Uh, <laughs> 2000 volt capacitors I think the highest I've got are 600 volt, but we can probably put some capacitors in series to replace those, uh, increase the volting rating, and have the capacitance. I think is how it works. Yeah, um, and that looks newer than what would normally be in here. Nice big power transformer seems in good shape. There's no rust. Um, it's other than the spider webs and shit. It's fairly. It's fairly nice under there. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of surprised. Uh, this may be um, maybe a much better, uh, much easier project than I had anticipated at first. Um, huh. Neato. Here's a block diagram of the thing. Not very complicated. I mean, you can't expect it to be. It doesn't have like a trigger circuit or anything. It just kind of has a sync circuit that sort of synchronizes when you adjust it just right. Uh, anyway, uh, the horizontal amplifier um, uh, is made of uh, part of this uh, half of the 12AU7, the great big tube, I, I think, and, and one of the 6J6s. Um, so my guess is one of those tubes is bad. The other part of the 12AU7 is used in the sync circuit. And the sync circuit does work when it's not in XY mode, so uh, when it's not in external horizontal input mode, I should say. Um, so my guess is that one of these 6J6s is bad. There's another one up here in the sweep circuit, which was working before. Uh, but unfortunately, I did not mark um, which 6J6 came out of which socket when I took them out, but that's all right. Um, this will give us a chance maybe to use the tube tester, which I don't, uh, may not work. I've never tried it before. Uh, that'll be an interesting project. Yes. Um, okay, anyway. Uh, let's, uh, let's test some shit, I guess. My ESR meter um, isn't really very good for testing these big high voltage capacitors. My guess is these are bad for sure, and these these are definitely bad. Um, and I'm, you know, if I'm going to be replacing all that, I might as well replace all of them, right? So, whatever. Uh, Resistor-wise, um, 
all of these sand resistors are within tolerance. Um, every one of these greenish colored rockwood sand resistors, however, are out of tolerance. Um, a few, a few of the these resistors are out of the carbon composition resistors. A few of them are out, and a few of them are in. Um, there are. You can see the gold bands on some of these. Those are precision resistors, which I assume uh, those are one percent resistors. I assume that's um, those have to be very exact for measurement purposes. So I'm going to go ahead and replace all of those precision resistors anyway because they've all drifted out of the one percent range. Up here, this this big rotary switch here is um, the vertical attenuator, and um, it's got. A bunch of precision resistors soldered between the two wafers, and um, that I think is important for the uh, for the um, measurement on the screen to be, you know, remotely close um, for the attenuator to work right. So those are all one percent resistors too. I'm going to replace all those, and there's some there's some way down in here that are out of tolerance as well. Those will be a pain in the ass. Oh, excuse me, to get to one of these resistors on the intensity control is way out, which, uh, or focus control, I meant to say, is way out, which may explain why I could never get the thing to focus. Um, or that could be a power supply issue to result from bad capacitors or something somewhere. And uh, a lot of these resistors back here uh, doing stuff uh, to the back of the CRT here, uh, a lot of them were out of specification. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm going to try to find a, um, an assembly manual for this thing because all I've got is the user's manual and hopefully the assembly manual will have pictures of the, um, of the assembled, uh, uh, assembled views of the thing and I can use that to more easily identify um, what's what between the actual machine and the schematic. Um, well, if the Heath kits always have those, but uh, this thing, uh, I don't know, I'll have to find the assembly manual. Anyway, um, it's about time for the Matt Christians in the show, so I'll see you later.